thank you guys. What an important day. And I recognize so many of your faces. It's great to be back in San Francisco. And you know, when you look at this day historically, it was 32 years ago, 32 years ago here at City Hall, Harvey Milk had just won his proposition. And he sat in that office debating, what is the next step? What do we do next? And everyone was saying, you're going too fast, Harvey. You need to slow down. And in his way, he said, forget that. <laughs> and he said, it is time to march on Washington. It is time, time to take this fight to Jimmy Carter and to follow in the footsteps of every successful civil rights movement in our great nation's history and to finally, at last, take this fight federal. But sadly, less than 24 hours later, a knock came to Harvey's door. It was Dan White, and he was tragically taken from us. And with him, with him vanished the strength and pride and resolve to take this fight federal. And here, 32 years later, in the city he loved, we are finally returning to that successful federal strategy. So Harvey, I think, would be quite, quite proud of us today. But today we mark a history of our own. Over the past months, I've gotten to know these plaintiffs. Their love is true and their families are strong. And to hear their stories is to know that they deserve full equality, that their families deserve full recognition. And now, Thank God, now is the time for the world to get to know Chris and Sandra and Paul and Jeff. Their stories are our stories. Their stories are the American stories. It's a story of love over hate, of compassion over condemnation, and a story of the strength and importance of family. And I cannot wait for America to meet these plaintiffs. Because now their stories must take, must take their own place. They must take their own place in history next to Brown versus the Board of Education and Loving versus Virginia and confirm what our great Constitution already tells us is true and that is separate is not equal and that separate is not equal and that all men, gay and straight, black and brown and white, are created equally. To those who say, wait, and I've heard wait a lot as we've put this case together. To those who say, wait, I, should, I say we should not be forced to wait our entire lives for equality. Because as Dr. King said so eloquently from his jail in Birmingham, for years now, I have heard the word wait, and this wait has almost always meant never. By straining to avoid our federal constitutional arguments, we only reinforce the false notion that our arguments lack merit. We reinforce the lies and the myths and the stereotypes that have been forced upon us and forced upon this country for generations. And the truth is, the truth is that truth is on our side. And truth always finds the light. Yeah. And I say we can no longer wait. We can no longer wait for one more young person to be born into this world, to be born into this country, being told that they are less than, that their, that their country considers them second-class citizens. We cannot wait for one more of these young people to hear those words and to take his or her own life or have it tragically taken from them. Now is the time for this challenge. Now is the time, and I've said it before, but it has never seemed more appropriate than now in the shadow of the movement started here by Harvey Milk. Now is the time, because in the next several weeks, it'll sound a lot like policy and politics and a lot of hard work. But to the, those young people out there, to those young people out there listening and watching, it'll sound a whole lot more like this. You are not less than. You have brothers and sisters, gay and straight, black and brown and white, and your struggle is our struggle, and your fight is our fight. And most importantly, most importantly, let it be heard from these steps that you are loved, and your love is valued, and very soon, I promise you, I promise you, you will be equal, and you will be free. Thank you.